I'm not sorry, I'm not recording. So I'm saying that we are going to look at one of the asset standards, which you call the IA system, property, plant, and equipment. I'm saying that for you to know which of the asset standards, basically, whenever you buy an asset, there are only three standards that are regulating that particular standard. We have the IS2, which is inventories, IS40, which is investment property, and IS16, which is property, plant, and equipment. So any time that you buy an asset, for you to know which of these standards you are going to use to regulate that particular asset, you have to know the purpose for buying the asset. So it is a purpose for buying the asset that will inform you about which of these three standards that you are going to use to regulate the assets. I said we have the IS2, which is the inventories, IS40, which is investment property, and IS16, which is property plant and equipment. So it is the purpose for the purchase of the asset that will inform you about which of these standards you are going to use. So the first thing is the asset that you are buying. If you are buying land, why are you buying the land for? If you are buying land, why are you buying the land for? Are you buying it for resale? Are you buying it for renting out, giving it to people to farm on it at the end of the day? All right, coffee. Combined class is this one. Every class that uh, we have classes on Saturday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. That is for FR and CR, which we did ratios for the previous sessions we did ratio. And for 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., it's going to be a combined class where we do only standards. But after 5 p.m., which is 7.45 to 9.45, FR will have, CR will have their separate section, which we are going to look at topics that are relating to only CR. Sunday, the same time, 7, 7.45 to 9.45 p.m., we still have F the CR, which we are going to look at specific topics in CR. So basically we are on, uh, for CR right now, we are on capital reorganization, which we are almost done. We are done, not that we are almost done, we are done. So the next weekend, which will be Saturday 7.45 to 9.45, we are going to do business valuation, which is in only CR. After we are done with the business valuation, then we'll be doing advanced consolidation for only CR. But for 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, it will be for only standards, which will be both FR and CR, both FR and CR. That's what I mean by the combined class. Have okay, thank you, Brian. Yes, sir. So does it mean that for the FR students, we only have one session? No, you have sections Saturday. Are you are you doing are you doing FR? Yes. Yes, we, we, we do class in the morning, 7 o'clock to 9.30. That is Saturday before we do the evening one. So for that particular, okay. we are doing con uh, consolidated financial statements, consult group accounts, which we are okay. yet to solve a question on it. We're supposed to do it yesterday because of uh, uh, my, my, lap my laptop was falling, so we, uh, we didn't do it. But we do it on Thursday. I'll schedule it to Thursday. All right. Okay. Thank you. So I wish you, since you're asking questions, I wish you all the best. All right. Thank you. But your voice is nice, but we'll talk about that later. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. So I was talking about whenever you buy an asset or your company. Okay, the first thing that you have to know is that the standards are not for individuals. The standards are not for social data. The standards are issued for Companies that prepare published accounts, it is issued for companies. So if you are an individual, I don't say you are you bought a car, you are carrying the car at revaluation for the cost for the more. The standards are not for individuals like us, it's for companies, not so potential for either partnership or anything. It's for companies. It's for companies. So I'm saying that whenever you buy an asset, you first have to know the purpose for buying the asset. It is a purpose for buying the asset, that will inform you about which of these standards that you are going to use. I'm saying that whenever you buy an asset, the first 
three standard you use to regulate that particular asset as investment property, IS for IS system, which is property plan and equipment, and also IS2, which is inventories. So if you are buying land, are you buying the land for resale? If you are buying the land for resale, you can never carry this land using or you cannot account for this land using property plant and equipment. You are going to use inventory because land now is inventory for you because you are buying the land purposely for yourself. That is what you are trading in. So the land now is an inventory. So you carry the land for your account and buy using inventories. If you buy the land purposely for renters to get money or rent income or something, to give it to people to farm their next and you'll be getting money at the end of every month, at the end of every year. You are going to use IS40, which is investment property, to account for this particular asset. If you are buying the land for this if you are buying the land for business use, for office use, for administrative purpose, that is where you are going to use IS system. IS system. Okay. A real estate company might be using building for administrative purpose. The same time using building for resale, like they will be the resale. Sometimes they can also use the building for renters. So this particular real estate company has to know which part of the building they are using for administrative purpose that they will use the IS system, which is property plant and equipment for it. Which of them are they renting out investment property and which of them are they selling as inventories? But in this case, whatever asset we are going to talk about today, we are assuming that they are for administrative purpose and they are bought not with intention of resale and they are bought not for renting out and they will be used in the business for more than one financial year. They, are, they will be used for administrative purpose due to the own we call it the corporate is owners occupied. The, the company is using them, the company has occupied it, and they're using it for administrative purposes. They are using it to run their business, and they are not selling it, and they are not going to use it out. That is what we are going to look at. So, if you say property, plant, and equipment, we are talking about those assets that are bought, not with the intention of reselling, not with the intention of renting them out but should be used by the entity for administrative purpose or to help the entity run smoothly. Those are what we are going to talk as the property plan. The, property plan. the first thing we have to know is that if we talk about property plans and equipment, we have three items. We have three items. If we say property, Property can be a building, or it can be land, or it can be land and building. That is property. If you talk about plants, if you go to some companies, they have something like a generator. That when there is a lighthouse, they, they own it and they still have power. You can see that is a plant. Equipment can be this, the machines that you have, and those kind of things. If you have furniture and fittings to you can still classify them as property plants and equipment. So the IS system that we are going to talk about, we are talking about assets that are bought not with the intention of reselling them to be used for administrative purpose and they will be in the business for one that one year. Those are what we are going to talk about today. Okay. If and um, if an entity Bought equipment. If an entity bought equipment for ten thousand Ghana cities, what should the entity do? You bought. You are the accountant of the company, and you people just purchased an equipment for the value of ten thousand. What do you have to do? What what would what what as an accountant? What are you going to? Do? Your company bought equipment ten thousand Ghana cities. As an accountant, what are you going to? Do? What will we do about this particular transaction? You credit your cash and debit your. You said uh, which property? Equipment. Equipment. Then you debit your equipment. 
Okay, you debit your equipment and credit your cash or bank, isn't it? Yes, sir. So you put the if you're preparing a statement of financial position, what are you going to do? You put your you put the equipment on your balance sheet, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we assume that you people you bought the equipment, isn't it? All right. So what if yes. you are you, you are just an accountant right now, or you, you are just being employed by the company as an accountant? And you went to the premises and you saw vehicles there. You, you saw vehicles there. And you realize that if you do go to the financial statement of the company, those vehicles are not reported on the financial statements or they are not reported on the statement of financial position. What question are you going to ask as an accountant? What questions are you going to ask your management as an accountant? I think as an accountant, you try to find out from management whether those cars or those properties that you have seen physically, which are not on the financial system, whether they belong to the company or, or uh, maybe uh, 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 the company went and rented them for, for, for the purposes of the, I mean, the, um, uh, 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 the business of the company. So you try to find out whether those properties belong to the company or it doesn't belong to the company. Okay, okay. Before you put them on the financial statement, whatever answer that you are going to get from them, that it will be those answers that will inform you whether to put it on the space of the financial statement or not, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Okay, that is nice. What is what is what is Kevia? What else do you think? What else do you think that? If the thing is not on the financial statement, what are you going to do? If if it's not on the financial statement, all right, you have to re recognize it in your financial statements for that particular. Year. So you know if you find out, know, so you have to know the amounts. No, you you have to find out the person say you have to find out whether it's for the company or not, okay. or whether it's for lease or hiring okay. or not. So you have to find out if it is the ownership of the company and it's a permanent asset of the company. That is when you have to recognize it in the books of the company. Okay. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. So you know just stand up and say you have equipment and this and this and put it there as part of the asset, isn't it? No, you have to find out from the people already in charge of the equipment. Okay. Okay, that is very nice. So, first of all, what we are going to talk about is that after defining what we call property plant and equipment, we are going to look at when should we put property plant and equipment on the face of the financial statement of a company? When should we do that? And those are the questions that I ask you. When should we do that? That is what we call recognition criteria. Recognition means you put in the value of the asset or the value of the item on the face of the financial statement. So when should we put, okay, equipment, 10,000, when should we do that? That is what we call recognition criteria of property, plant and equipment or of assets. So the first thing that we have to look at is that, what is the recognition criteria? What should inform us that we should go and put equipment, we put 10,000 against it on the face of the statement of financial position. That is what we are going to look at. The first one is someone said that we should ask management whether the asset belongs to them, the entity has control over it, whether it is for someone. If it is for someone, you don't have control over it. If it is for someone, you don't have control over it. You can't direct how the asset should be used or not. You can't come and take car from me and you'll be riding the car or you'll be driving the car anyhow. Your mindset will be like, hey, if I should be driving this car anyhow and uh, maybe I see you, what am I going to do? I will do something like that. So you can't have a free mind to use the car anyhow. It means that you can't direct the control of the car. You can't decide how the car should be used or those kind of things. So if the thing doesn't belong, if the thing doesn't belong to the company, the company can recognize it. They don't have control over it. But when there is a control and the entity can direct the usage of the asset, how the asset should be used. And if they are using the asset, it is the entity that is going to benefit from the usage. Then we say 
this asset belongs to the entity and the entity can put it on the face of the financial statement. So the first recognition criteria is when the economic benefits associated with the asset will flow to the entity, when the future economic benefits associated with the usage of the asset will flow to the entity. We are using the assets. We are taking the asset. We are sending our goods to the market. Yes, we are using the asset to the benefit of the company. And the entity has control over it. Nobody will come and say the asset is, is mine. So I will take it. I will know. We bought it. So we can put this one in the face of the financial statement. Another one is if the cost of the assets can be measured reliably. You just went there and you saw equipment. You don't know how much they bought it. And the management was telling him that, okay, it was one of the cousins of the, the 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 owner who got it. No, you can't find the cost. You see, you can't you bought a thing in a black market in which there is no cost. But if you have the asset, if you go to the market, you know that this is how much this asset can be sold. Yes, the value is open there. If you go ask, if you go and ask anyone, they can mention the value to you. For that particular asset, you can recognize it because you know the cost. The cost is something that you don't have to struggle before you get it. If you ask people, they say, okay. Now, uh, tractor is 10,000 Ghana cities. Yes, you know, you don't have to suffer. Go here, go here, go here before you find the cost of the assets. So, the next one is the cost can be measured reliably. The cost can be measured reliably. And also, when there is a sufficient evidence that the asset exists, when there is a sufficient evidence that the asset exists, management is telling you that, okay, we have, we have plants which is inside the bush. So put it on the face of the financial statement. No, you can't see the asset. Why should, you, why should the asset be there? You can't see the asset. Why should the asset be there? You can't see the asset. Why should the asset be there? They say they have it in the booth somewhere and you can't go and see it. You can't be there. So when there's a sufficient evidence about the existence of the asset, you can also recognize the asset. I will take the recognition criteria again. When it is possible and probable that future economic benefits associated with the asset will flow to the entity through usage. When the entity has control over the assets, when the cost of the asset can be measured reliably, when there is a sufficient evidence about the existence of the assets, you can go ahead and put the asset in the face of the financial statements. Okay. If you have all these criteria now, what value are you going to put that the equipment that you are getting in the face of the statement of the financial position? What value are you going so to put? Sir, please, I can hardly hear you. Your voice is drowning. Really? Yes, please. Is it okay now? Please, can you make yes. it audible? Yes, okay. 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 Your voice. I can talk now, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I'm saying that after you find out about these criteria, these conditions that the asset belongs to the entity, uh, the entity has control over it and those things, and you can now go ahead and put equipment there, what value should you put against the equipment? After meeting the criteria, what value should you put there? For you to know what value you should put there, you need to be informed by the following activities. The first thing is, how does the asset comes into existence? How does the asset comes into existence? Like, did the entity buy the asset outright? They just buy it. They, they went to the market and bought it. Was the asset bought outright? Was it an outright purchase? If, it's, if it is an outright purchase, how much did you pay for the asset? How much did you pay for the asset? They will say, okay, we pay 10000 But before we, we bring the asset to our premises, we incur a delivery cost of what? 10000 we, we We paid 100000 for it. Before we bring the asset to our premises, we incur what? 10000 We paid import duties on the assets. We pay this and this on the assets. So if... You bought the asset 100,000. You paid a delivery fee of 10,000. You paid import duties of 5,000. 
how much are you going to put against the assets? What will be the value of the assets? What, what will be the value of the assets? You bought the assets, 100,000, you paid delivery fee of 10,000, you paid import duties of 5,000. What will be the value of the assets? It will be the cost of the assets plus all the other expenditures that you have incurred on the assets. Okay, 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 okay. What if what if what if you you started using the assets and you incur uh you incur a cost on maintenance? Would that also be part of the cost of the assets? If you started using the assets and yes. you care. Mm, it wouldn't be part no, of, it will not be part of the cost. It will not be part of the cost. Why do you think it will not be part of the cost? Because if you have already put the assets into use before that expenditure uh, came into being, so you cannot add it to the cost of the assets. Okay. Okay. It be maintenance cost is 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 a cost that you incur on daily basis. So you, it's 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 being considered to be a recurrent or a revenue expenditure. All right. Expenditure. So we are talking about initial recognition of the assets. Initial recognition of the asset before you know the cost that you are going to put there as a cost of the asset or as the value of the asset. You have to know how the asset comes into existence. The first one is how like was it an outright purchase where you bought the asset from someone? If we if if you didn't get any cost to bring the asset to its intended use, like delivery costs, import duties, testing, and other costs, if you didn't, if you don't incur any cost like that, the cost of the asset is the same as the, the amount of money that you paid for the what the asset. But if you get any direct cost to bring the asset to its intended stage of use, like delivery costs. If you don't get a delivery cost, the asset will not come to your premises. So delivery cost is directly attributable to activities of bringing the asset to its stage of use. So the delivery cost will be added to the initial cost of the assets. If you incur import duties, import duties, if you don't pay them, you can't clear the assets. So we, without import duties, you will not have the asset to use. So that will also be part of the cost of the assets. If you carry out testing on the assets. You, you want to test the asset whether it is working properly before you start using it. That testing cost is also a cost that you incurred. If, if you didn't test the assets, you won't use it. So it's also a cost which is directly attributable to, to, to the asset. So if you buy the assets from someone, the cost that you are going to put on the asset, the cost that you are going to put against the assets in the statement of financial position include the following include the following. The first one is the, the amount paid for the assets. Sometimes you can pay and they will say for some company, they want you to pay early, they will give you a discount. They will give you a discount. We have two types of discounts. We have two types of discounts. And these are what? Philip, what are the two types of discount we have, Philip? Philip, are you there? Hello, sir. Yeah, what are the two types of discount that we have? If I carry discount, we have cash discount and what and trade discount. Okay, okay. So when you are giving a cash discount, the cash discount is something that is given on a condition. So it, it is assumed that you cannot pay within that period. And maybe cash discounts can be can be given like two times or three times in a year. So cash discount are assumed to be a recurrent revenue, a recurrent receipt. But if you are giving a trade discount, whether you pay early or not, you will still enjoy it. So when you are giving a discount, trade discount or cash discount, we only net off the trade discount against the cost of the assets. For cash discount, we assume that it's something which is recurrent. They can give you maybe five times in a year. But trade discount, once, once it is given, it is given. It will be there forever. So we only net off the trade discount against the cost. So if the cost is 100,000 and they are giving you a discount of 2%, the cost of the asset will now be 98% of the cost because you are taking 
two percent out. That is how we go about it. So any other cost that you get to bring the asset to each stage of use will be added to the initial cost or will be added to the purchase price of the asset. Example of these costs are testing costs, delivery costs, professional costs, import duties. You sometimes you pay some refundable, non-refundable taxes or VAT. If you pay refundable VAT, it means that maybe sometime uh, at any point in time or in the future, they give you that money back. So we expense that one. We expense it all. When you look at no refundable taxes, no refundable taxes. We have some other costs, which is the borrowing cost. Maybe you go and borrow purposely to acquire that particular asset. The interest on that particular amount that you borrow will be added to the cost of the asset. That is if you buy the assets from someone. What if you build the assets yourself? What if you manufacture the assets yourself? What if you manufacture the assets yourself? Let's assume that you are building. What are the things that you need to build there? The, what are the things that you need for the building? What are the things that you need to have the building complete? What are the things that you need? Olivia, if you are building, what are the things that you need? Olivia, are you there? Philip, if you want to build now for yourself, what are the things that you need? Hello, sir. Yes. Please, uh, please come again. I'm saying that if you are building, like your company wants, like your company right now, they don't want to go and buy mm -hmm. the building from someone. They want to man, they want to build, they want to construct the building themselves. What are the things that they will use? What are the things that they will use? What are the things that they will need to complete the building? Uh, they will need land. They will need land, okay. And uh, capital. And capital. The capital will be and used for what? The, the capital will, will be used for. Uh, I, I mean the, the amount to be involved in the structure you want to put up. Uh, and also you need labor. The amount that you mm -hmm. need to put the structure in, the, that amount is, the labor is part of the amount you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir. Okay, but yeah, let's sir. talk about what, what are those things necessary for the building to be complete, to be completed. Mm -hmm. of, um, hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, cost of uh, bringing the materials to the site, cost of the land, cost of clear, uh, clearing the land, and also, um, Cost of maybe consultants, maybe okay. those six consultancy. Yeah, okay. so they are all involved in the cost. Sure. Okay. 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 That is nice. Okay. Basically, if you are if you are self building the assets, basically the cost that you are going to incur is the direct material cost incurred on the asset, the labor cost, any expenses that is directly attributable to the construction or the manufacturing of the assets. Basically, those are the, the costs that you're going to incur. So if you have a material, if you incur a material cost, which some of them are not relating to the construction of the assets, we only look at the cost incurred on the material that is directly relating to the construction of the assets. So if you if you buy a material which is 100,000 and only 75,000 was used on the assets, the 75,000 will only be the component of the assets. The 25,000 will be relating to something else because we don't use, we didn't use all the, all the material on the, on the assets. So if you are self-building the assets, you look at the cost that you are going to incur on manufacturing or constructing the assets. The first cost is the direct material. The, the, the cost of the material used on the assets, the cost of labor. If the company pays uh, the labor for either time, either time, time that that was not used, so we can't add the either time to the cost of the, the asset because that hours of the labor was not used on the on the asset. So we look, look at only the hours used by the labor on the asset. And we also look at maybe administrative expenses that was that was directly incurred as a result of what you manufacturing or constructing the assets. You can also look at the consultancy fee, the clearing of the land and those kind of things. 
and even the land if you buy the land the land will also the cost of the land will also become part of the asset maybe land and building the next one is is the asset to leases is it true leases if it's, if it is true leases what will happen if it is true leases what will happen if it's true leases what will happen we didn't pay or we didn't buy it we didn't construct it but we lease the assets what do we do we will use the IFRS system, which is lazy for that particular one. We try to discount the lease payments to find the future or to find the present value of the what? The lease amounts, the amount that we are paying at the end of every five years or for the five years, we try to present value them. And if we get any direct cost on the assets, we add it to the what? The present value of that one. That one we are going to do it under lazy, so we don't have to waste our time on it. But what if the, the asset that you are leasing is not completed, it's an uncompleted, maybe it's, it's building where the leaseholder have uh, constructed the building up to some stage and they are down with other places. The, the, the building is not complete and you are not coming to complete it. What do you do? What do you do? If you are taking the asset at 100,000 and you are not spending 150,000 to, to complete it, what would be the total cost of the of the bidding now? You are taking it you at 100,000. Yeah. You add the cost of the of the of the of the lease, I mean the lease. Okay. Then you then then you also add the 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 cost you incurred in I mean bringing the the assets into its final conclusion. Okay. All right. All right. That is nice. That is nice. All right, that is nice. The next thing that you have to ask yourself is that, is it true exchange? Like you give the asset to someone and someone also give you an asset. Maybe your company, if you have so many cars, but you need plants, you don't have plants and you don't have the money to go and buy. And another company also has so many plants and they need a car. What you are going to do is that if you can do, you can exchange the car for the plants. You can exchange the car for the plants. What normally happens is that if you are exchanging the car for the plants, you ask yourself, what is the fair value or the current value of the car that I'm giving out? If the fair value of the car that you are giving out is 20,000 and the plant that you are taking is 15,000, what is happening? Meaning you are losing. You are. You 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 i mean you are losing by five thousand or so okay so you will now recognize your plants at fifteen thousand and a loss and write the, the asset of are you okay? okay okay what if the car that you are giving out is fifteen thousand and the plant that you are taking is twenty thousand meaning you are making a gain okay so as, at what amount are you going to recognize the plants Um, I think it's a sixteen thousand rider. No, it's fifteen. the The plant is the plant is twenty, and the car you are giving out is fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Yeah. Recognize it at twenty thousand. You recognize it at twenty thousand, and you recognize a gain of what yeah. five thousand. So when you are doing exchange, assume that you have sold the asset. When you are doing exchange, just assume that the asset that you are giving out has been sold. So you will try to see if you are making a gain or loss. Are you okay there? Are you okay there? So let's look at initial recognition of the asset. If there is no cost, there is no other cost incurred on the asset, the asset should be measured at what? At its purchase price, which is a cost. But if you incur additional cost to bring the asset to its intended stage of use, like plants right now. If you buy the plant, you can't just bring the plant and start using it. You are going to install it, isn't it? So you are going to incur installation yeah. costs. That installation yes. cost, you are incurring the installation cost because you want to use the plant. Are we okay there? Yes. Okay. So the installation cost will be added to the to the cost of the asset. How much you bought the asset, the purchase price of the asset. You also incur delivering costs. 
they took the asset from where you bought it to your premises now. If not for the purchase of the asset, you will not have in, in care that particular delivery cost. So delivery cost must also be added towards to the initial cost of the assets. Testing. After installing the, the plant, you have, you, you have to test it to see whether it is working or not. Without testing, you can't use the asset because you have to test it and see whether it is working or not. So the testing cost will also be added to the initial cost of the asset. If you pay import duties and those things, they will all be added to the cost of the, the assets. If you pay any VAT, which is no refundable VAT, you add it to the cost of the asset. But refundable VAT, I assume that it will be, it will later be given to the company. So therefore, it will be prudent for us to expense it. Whenever it is refunded, we send it as income. That is all. So we are going to look at the initial recognition of and assets, initial recognition of assets. Of what about insurance costs? Maybe you insured the, 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 the assets. Okay, the question uh, now is how often yeah. do you pay the insurance? Yeah. Hmm? How often do you pay the insurance? Okay. If the insurance is a one-time payment that you are going to make and that is the end, you can, you can, record, you can add it to the cost of the assets. But if it's something mm. that you'll be paying yearly, it means that it's recurrent. It's recurrent, okay. Are you okay? So it must be expensed. Okay. Are you okay? okay? All right. But if it's something that you pay just once and that is all, you can add it to the cost of the assets. Or if you are paying the insurance three years, every three years, it means that you take the insurance as a separate item and amortize it over the three years. Okay. Sometimes you also enter into maintenance contract for five years. Don't add the maintenance to the asset. You, you can only incur cost on maintenance if you start using the asset. Already the asset is in its internal use, so you can't add the maintenance cost. But what you do is that you take the maintenance cost for five years and amortize it over the five years. Are you okay? Okay. I was even, ask, I was even thinking, someone will ask me if you are taking building permits building permits if you are constructing the assets yourself and you are taking building permits yeah you add it okay the building permit the mm -hmm. question is how often do you pay for the permits if it is one time, one time once, okay yeah. if it is once added if it is for every three years take it as a separate item and amortize it over the what the three years okay are you okay okay all right what if you 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 conducted a penny a penny for the staff on the use of maybe computer or the use of the plant? The plant is now installed, now ready for use, and you have to train your staff before they can use it. That training course, what will happen to the training course? You can't add it. I don't think you have to add it. Okay. If you can't add it, you don't think. Why do you think so? <laughs> please your question again oh, yeah. okay my question is we all agree that the company bought what plant isn't it they have installed the plant everything is ready but before they can put the plant into use before they can start using it they have to train the staffs on how to use it and i'm saying that the cost in care on the training are they going to add it to the cost the initial cost of the assets or what are they going to do No, they won't, they won't add it. They will add it because the, 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 that particular cost wasn't incurred on the asset. It was on, incurred on the, uh, uh, on the human resource, those who use the assets. Would that so cost be incurred? Would that cost be incurred if the plants were, were, if the plants were to not be, like if the entity should not buy, <clears throat> would that cost be incurred? If okay. the entity should not buy the assets, should not buy the plant, if the plant should not have been bought, would that cause yes. being get? No. No, okay. So you can see where I'm coming from and where you're also coming from. Yeah. Yes. But what yes. you are saying is you. right. What you are saying is right. It can't be capitalized. It cannot be added. Do you know why? Do you know why? No. Because we can only 
recognize assets when we have control over it. Control over it, okay. The staff, you don't have control over them. They can go with their, their if you are training them, you are boosting their, their skills level, their knowledge level, isn't it? Yeah, yes. They can leave the company and they will leave you the knowledge. Yes. So you can't control them. But if there is a situation where the, those staffs are under control, under contracts, that they can't leave the company until four years. Okay. They are in contracts that you can't leave them after four years. What you are going to do is that you are going to recognize that particular training course as an intangible asset. Because the knowledge acquired by the employee during the, uh, during the training cannot be seen. The knowledge okay. acquired by them during the training cannot be seen. So what we are going to do is that if these staffs are being held under contract for four years, they cannot leave until the end of the four years, then the training course will now be capitalized as an intangible asset and be amortized over the, the life of the contracts or the useful life of the contracts. But the training course cannot be capitalized because you don't have control over the staffs. They can leave at any time. Are you okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's look at, that is the initial measurement. Any course that is in care to bring the asset to its intended use, uh, stage of use will be added to the initial course of the assets. The second thing that we have to look at is that after recognizing the asset at the, that particular amount, you start using it, isn't it? Yes. So if you have plants at the beginning of the year, which is 100,000, at the end of the year, will you still have the same value of the plants? No. no. Why, why? Why do you think the, 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 the value will not be the same? Because there will be wind here. They, they... There will be depreciation. There will be depreciation, isn't it? Yes, yes. Okay. The assumption is that the efficiency of the asset will reduce. The, what the asset can do from the beginning might not be able to do the same thing at the end of the year. So the efficiency yes. of the assets will reduce. Therefore, we have to make allocation for what we call what? Depreciation. So if you are doing a subsequent measurement, what we do is that we calculate depreciation on the asset. We have two, more than two methods of the asset, but basically the ones that we use is the reducing balance method and the what? The straight line or the fixed installment method. So the subsequent measurement has to do with depreciation, has to do with depreciation, has to do with depreciation. All right. Before I will continue again, I want you to, uh, if land a depreciable item, is land depreciable asset? Hello? Yeah, it's land a depreciable asset. Depreciable. Yes. No. No, please. No. It's okay. rather. No. La land increases in value all the time. Yes, it's that Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. You see, first I should have said this thing before I start the class. I appreciate. <laughs> you see, nobody should lie to you that land does not appreciate. Nobody should lie to you that land does not depreciate. If you okay. leave the land from someone for five years, what are you going to do? After the five years, will you still be having a land? Oh, I should come with your question again. You lose land from someone for five years. Five where years here. You are going to do maintenance, everything. You are going to incur the risk. And it's a financeless. It's a financeless. For five years. After the five years, will you still have the land? After the no. land, you leasing yes, the you, you leasing the you leasing the land. You will you still have the land and be using it? Finance lease, right? Yeah, it's a if finance. You are the lessee. Yes, if you are the lessee, after the five years, will the lessee ha have the assets in its possession and be using it again? No, no, you will not. You will not still have it. So That's if no, you are lessee, that you are recognizing right of use in your statement of financial position, what are you going to do? If you're let's see, you consider that that particular asset as 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 a property to as you. Property and for five years, which is land. So what are you going to do? Are you going to be depreciating it, or you say that land does not depreciate? You have to depreciate it. Uh, you depreciate. You spread the cost over the useful life. 
So we have, we have right now, I've given you one reason why you should, you, you should say lamb is a depreciable item, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. We only assume lamb does not depreciate because we assume that lamb has indefinite lifespan. If you can determine the lifespan of the lamb, depreciate it. The assumption is that the land will be there forever. But if you can determine the lifespan of the land, building can be there forever. But we, we assume that maybe building can last for 10 years or 50 years or something. The building will be on the land. If the building is very strong. So right now, if we should depreciate Kwame Nkrumah's building, the, those days building, which are still there, the government are using for government offices, the buildings are still there. And we assume that they are going to last for only 50 years and they are there. What are we doing? We are receiving ourselves, isn't it? So we only say land mm. does not depreciate if we can determine the lifespan or the useful life of the land. But in the case of the lessee, I've given you a lessee scenario right now. The leases. Yes, he is, he is going to depreciate the land. But you are saying that land does not depreciate. So yeah, but even, but even in a situation where where maybe the land, the uh, uh, at the time you bought the land, it was a clean land and later on maybe somebody has let's say this galaxy people okay they have destroyed the land and so okay. you cannot sell the land at the at the cost you understand you bought okay. the land so i i think the cost will come down okay the that, value of that, that land will come down yes if you want to sell that land you can't okay. sell it at a profit because that land has been degraded or has been destroyed and okay. so nobody will buy that land and that is what we call it, that... it, it, the land has impaired that is impairment impairment okay yes that is impairment so if you are going to sell the land lower than the value that you should the the difference should be an impairment the land has okay. impaired are you okay so okay. that i have forgotten to say that in from the beginning i don't keep it in your mind that land has not our land land does not depreciate. The question will come and they will put it over their least food land. Least food land for five years. What are you going to do? It means that you are losing the, you are losing the land for, for only five years. But at the end of the five years, you won't have the land again. So you have to depreciate it. But you'll be there saying that, okay, land does not depreciate and you are gone. Oh, okay. Yes, All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, true. so let's move on. Let's move on. So the, the first, the subsequent measurements, the subsequent measurement, let me, be, let me be sharing my slides. I'm talking too much. Okay. So we look at the recognition criteria, isn't it? Okay. So whenever you recognize the assets, you must be able to establish the following. The cost, the useful life, the square value, and the method of depreciation in the case of depreciable what? assets. So after putting the value of the asset on the statement of financial position at the beginning of the year, you have to ask yourself, what is the useful level of, of the assets? And what method of depreciation am I going to use to depreciate these assets? Depreciation is the what? Is the allocation of the depreciable value of the asset over its useful what? Life. Over its useful life. So what, what is the useful life of the assets? Is it going to be 10 years? If it is 10 years, what method of depreciation am I going to use? At the end of the 10 years, am I going to sell it for a consideration? Am I going to receive any amount from it? That is what we are talking about here. The PP is the same as the depreciation that you have done at the SHS level. The only difference, the only addition to the PPE is revaluation model. We will look at the initial measurements. I have told you that you should ask yourself in the form that the asset comes into existence. Is it self-built? Is it finance lease agreement? Is it through purchase? Is it through exchange and all those things? So if it is true purchase, these are the costs that you, you add to the asset. I've said them already, but I'll go through them again. Purchase PP, the cost is the purchase price and, and all other costs that will make the asset ready for use. The standard gives guidance on what must be, what must and what must not be included in the cost computation of a purchase property, plant and equipment to include purchase price less any trade worth discounts. 
Cash discount are assumed to be a recurrent receipt. They are assumed to be recurrent revenue. So don't let it against the purchase price. Import duties and non-refundable purchase taxes. Direct applicable cost of bringing the asset to working condition for its intended use. Example, the cost of site preparation. So uh, before you install your plant, you have to clear where you are going to install the plant. That is the cost of the site preparation. You have to add it. Initial delivery and handling costs, installation costs, testing costs, and professional fees. Professional fees. Maybe it can be the building before you 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 build, you, you, you went for a plan, building plan, and they charge you or engineers. You, you do those things, and that is the professional fees. Initial estimate of the of the unavoidable cost of the dismantling and removing the asset and restoring the site on which it is located. This is covered under IS 37 provisions, contingent assets and contingent liabilities or something like that. All right. So what will happen is that you, this, this cost is, is basically for the petroleum companies and also the mining companies. You see the mining companies, mostly the land will be given to them on lease, isn't it? It will be given for a number of, maybe the land, is it the land commission or what? Who normally lease the land to the, the mining companies? Is it the land commission? Yes, yes. Okay, the land commission will give the land to them for a given period of time. And they will say that, okay, after that period, what, what they will do? Every equipment that they install on the land will be what? Dismantled. Yes. Okay, so that, that dismantling cost is what we are saying. If you are going to have the land for 30 years, you can't determine the cost that you are going to incur on the on you, you trying to dismantle or recycle the land. You, you can only assume that, okay, at the end of the 30 years, maybe we are going to uh, incur this amount on the dismantling or recycling or removing the assets or taking the plants and everything from the land. So what we normally do is that if, okay, someone wants to talk. Someone wants to talk. No one wants to talk. Okay. So we normally look at the future value of the cause that we are going to incur on taking everything from the land. If not for that particular production or those things, or if not for you taking the asset from those places, you will incur this dismantling cost. So what we do is that if we are incurring 30,000 in 30 years time, if we should do the dismantling to be what would be the cost? So we find the present value of the dismantling cost and add it to the initial cost of the asset. So the question will always give you a discount factor and it will give you the future value. Then you now discount it, find the present value and now add it to the initial value of the assets. The following costs are not cost of an item of property, plant and equipment. The first one is administration and other general overhead costs. Administration and other general overhead costs. Now you are paying salary to the workers. How is the salary related to the acquisition of what? Property, plant and equipment. It has no, no relationship. You are buying stationaries. How? What is the relationship between purchase of PP and stationary? No. So those costs cannot be cannot be added to the cost of the asset. Startup and similar pre-production costs. Pre-production cost. The pre-production is the asset is already installed and you are using it, but you want to. You want to produce some of the items, just a sample. You want to produce some, just some item, sample, not testing. This is different from testing. You have tested it already, and now you want to produce, but you are thinking of producing 100,000, but you want to produce only half of that. And you incur a loss. No, you can't add that because the asset is already available for use. It's now ready for use. It's not that you are incurring this cost to know or to bring the asset to its intended use. These are costs that you will get after the asset is ready for its intended use. You can add up pre-production costs or pre-production losses. Initial operating losses before the asset, which is plant performance. Okay, you, you install the asset and you are not using it. And if you are producing, you are incurring losses. So you can't add that. The asset is already ready for use. 
cost of opening a new facility. No, you have a plant and now you are you are having another plant installed. No, you can't come and add that particular cost of the cost relating to the plant to the already plant that you are using. Cost of introducing a new product or service, include, including cost of advertising and promotional activities. No, these are relating to development and research. You can't add that cost. You can't add that cost to the initial cost of the asset. Cost of conducting business in a new location with a new class of customers. No. Including cost of staff training. No, you can't add that one. The, the asset is already in use. Not that you are incurring this cost to bring the asset to its intended use or its stage of for the, 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 the use that you want to cost of wastage, material or labor in terms of self-constructed work assets. I'm saying that if you are constructing the assets yourself, we only add the cost of the material that we are used in the construction process of the asset. The cost of the labor that we are directly incurred on the construction of the asset. If there is any idle time that you paid for, no, the idle time or the, the hours for the that particular time that the labor were not working, but you pay them, were not used on the construction of the assets. So that particular cost for the added time will not be added to the to the cost of the assets. That is what they are talking about over there. We are looking at the exchange. The exchange, I've spoken about that already. And let's look at the subsequent measurement. The subsequent measurement, we have looked at that one. That we say that after you have recognized the assets, the value of the asset at the beginning of the year will not be the same as the value of the asset at the end. We are we assume that the asset is going to depreciate, reduce its efficiency is going to reduce. That is what we call the subsequent measurement. So the subsequent measurement issue about depreciation will come in. Then you now decide which type of which method of depreciation that you are using. Is it fixed installment, which is the straight line method, or reducing balance, or you're using production units, or you're using production hours? Which of them? The question will give you that. All right. Subsequent expenditure. Let's look at what we call subsequent expenditure. Subsequent expenditure, one example can be maintenance costs, repairs and maintenance, isn't it? Repairs and maintenance. So you are using the asset, you now incur repairs and maintenance costs of what? 100,000. Would this cost be added to the, to the value of the assets? No. Okay. It will not be added. Why it should not be added? Why it should not be added? Yes. It's, not... it's not what we just. Stefano. It's not related to the cost of assets. Okay. The Stefano, cost is not okay. Stefano, people it's say that you used to, to worry. All right, we just that's nice. Stefan, people say that you used to worry in other classes. Why in my class you don't worry? Or why? <laughs> but I you didn't are, hear your question. <laughs> but you and Kasa, you can worry or you don't know. <laughs> There's time for everything. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> so we are saying that you are you are maybe you have your car that you are saying that you are going to use the car for 10 years. And you are using the car, and in the process, you went to do repairs and maintenance for the car. I'm saying that if you can get 10,000 on the repairs and maintenance, are you going to add it to the initial cost of the, the car? That is the new value of the car now you have. Stefano, that is my question, or you still haven't gotten my question? Oh, I. Can you come again? I'm saying that you bought a car which worth 100 million. Okay. And you, you are saying that you are going to use this car for 10 years. Okay. And in the process of you driving the car, you the car developed faults and you went to do repairs and maintenance on the car for 10,000. Mm. And I'm saying that, are you going to add the 10,000 to the initial value of the car, which is 100 million, as the... The new value of the car now, and you'll be telling people that you bought a car. Why? Then yes, then, you add it. Why are you adding it? You add it because that is what will, will, will 
will bring the car into its proper condition for, 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 for somebody to see it and then maybe say, I want to buy it. So I think uh, you, you add it. You started using the car radio. Yes. Okay. 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 Since it's, a, it's an open question. That is what I think. Yes. Okay. It's an open question. We just saying that we you expense it. So now the argument is we are capitalizing it and we are expensing it. Which of them is correct? And why? Why repairs and maintenance should be expensed and why it should be capitalized and added to the cost of the assets? Why? Why? I want to give it a try. Okay, coffee. Let's move on. Okay, so I'm saying uh, uh, repairs and maintenance. It's if it is going to extend the useful life of the of the car, then we can capitalize it. For example, okay. If you have okay. a car and you do a serious body works on it, it's going to um, increase the efficiency of the car. But if it is the normal maintenance, the regular ones should be then we can expand it because it, it is okay. not going to expand the useful life of the car. Okay. Okay. Copy, you have said all. You can only add a subsequent expenditure to the initial cost of the asset if that expenditure is going to extend the useful life of the assets. If that expenditure is going to improve upon the efficiency of the assets. Example of those expenditure would be you change the engine of the car. You know that a car, the whole car is the engine, isn't it? So after changing the engine, what will happen? The car will improve, the performance of the car will improve and the car, the useful life of the car can also change because the car is, is, is basically the engine. Are you okay? If you did an extension to a building, that particular cost can also be capitalized. But if you get any subsequent expenditure which does not extend the useful life of the asset and also does not improve upon the production efficiency of the asset, those expenditures should be what? Expense. Example of that one is repairs and what? Maintenance. But if these repairs and maintenance will help to will help extend the useful life of the asset, then we can capitalize it. If you, if you do repairs and maintenance, it doesn't change the fact that you're going to use the car for 10 years. Oh. The repairs and maintenance will not do anything to the car. It is the it is the it is the tire that is that is that is worrying. And you, you go and repair the tire. No, the tire is not the engine. The, the car is the engine. So those expenses should not be what capitalized. We can only capitalize those expenses when we are we are certain that it's going to improve upon the efficiency of the car, the useful life of the car, or something like that. So if not, those expenses should be worth capitalized. Let's look at what we call. Oh, okay. It should be expensed. Make, it should be expensed. Okay, before we do that, let's look at how to how to do this one, how we go about uh, how we calculate cost of initial cost of the assets, how we calculate the initial cost of the asset. Let's look at this first example. Let's look at this first example. Tutorial question one. A company has purchased a large item of plant. The following costs were incurred. Purchase price before discount, inclusive of reclaimable sales tax of what? 3,000. Discount of 1,000. Delivery cost of 500. <laughs> installation cost of 750. And the interest on loan taken out to finance, to finance the, the purchase. So what are those costs that will be capitalized and what are those that will not be capitalized? Okay. Well, calculate the amount to be recognized as cost of plants in accordance with IA system. So what are those costs that will be capitalized? Let's move on. What are some of these costs that will be capitalized? The first cost will be purchase price less discount, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. What, is, what is the purchase price? 20,000. No, read again. Purchase price before discount, inclusive of reclaimable sales tax of 30,000. Do you have to capitalize uh, reclaimable tax? 
No. 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 So, so what will be the purchase price of the no. assets no. now? So 17,000. 17,000. 17, that is the purchase 20, price. 20,000. Okay. 20,000 one is what? Minus the, 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 the reclaimable tax. Which is 3,000. So the purchase price will now be 17,000, isn't it? Yeah. So what will happen? The discounts, yes. what are we going to do with the discounts? You take you suppress the discount. You okay. Take it out. Okay. Delivery cost. Are we going to add? Yes. yes. We'll add it. Installation cost. Yes. We'll yes add it. You add. Interest on loan taken out to finance the purchase. We do nothing. You add it. We say that we do nothing. If not for the purchase of the assets, then you are not going to for the loan. So the loan is specifically taken out to purchase the assets. This is what so we call borrowing the interest. Cost. Yeah, we add the interest. So our cost of the assets will now be 20,000 minus the 3,000. And so after discounts, we add delivery costs, we add installation costs, we add interest on loan taken out to finance the words, the purchase. Let's take another example before we move on. Okay, let's look at the example two. Example two. A company has purchased a, a large item of plants. The following costs were incurred: Least price of the machine. Great discount given. Delivery cost, installation cost, cost of site recreation, architectural fix, and uh, administrative expenses and test run costs. Okay, test run cost was to ensure that the asset was installed and working correctly. Items of inventory were produced during the test run. This had a sales value of 10,000. Local government officials has granted the company a list to trade the assets on condition that the company will remove the assets and return the site to its former condition at the end of the asset life. The company has recognized the liability of 250,000 in respect of the expected parents' costs. Calculate the amount to be recognized as cost of the plant in accordance with what IS 16. Okay, let's let's let, let me just share this one and solve this question. This one it needs some kind of explanation that we we have to take note of. Okay. Okay, so we are going to have initial cost. What will be the initial cost? What will form part of the initial cost? The first one is the purchase price, isn't it? Which is the least price of the machine? The least price is what? The least price one is million. one million. One so million. we, we take the, the least price, which is one million. What is the next discount? We less the discount, isn't it? Yes. yes. Discount. How much is the discount? Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. So he less the discounts fifty thousand. Okay, what will be the other cost? What are you the add delivery cost? Delivery cost is one hundred thousand, isn't it? Yes, please. Delivery cost is hundred thousand. So you add delivery. Delivery cost to be hundred thousand. What next? You add installation cost. Installation cost. Installation cost is how much? One twenty-five thousand. One twenty-five thousand. So what? What again? Then you add cost of site preparation. Cost of site preparation is how much? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Okay. What's next? You add architecture fees. 
Okay. It's how much? Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Okay. What are you going to add again? You add test run cost. Tax run cost. Okay. Okay. Tax run cost. Okay. Tax run cost is what? Seventy-five thousand. Okay. Tax run cost. Would they say something about the tax run cost? So let's seventy-five. Let's 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 look at that. So let's read what they have on the test round costs. The test round cost was to ensure that the assets was installed and working correctly. Items of inventory were produced during the test round. This had a sales value of what? Hundred thousand. Ten thousand. Well, so what are we going to do? We are going to sell this event, isn't it? We are going to yes, sell them, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. So if we are selling them, we get a cost of seventy-five thousand, and we are now having a revenue of ten thousand. So in 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 all, what is the cost that we are incurring? Sixty-five thousand. Sixty-five thousand. So mm. since we are we are we are producing this inventory as a result of a test run, any income that will, that we are going to generate from the sale of the inventory that we produce will be net up against the test run cost. Are you okay? Yes, okay. So that will give us 75,000 one is 10,000. And that will give us 65,000 at the end. Yeah. That will give us 65,000 at the end. What else, what else do you have to add? Let's look at the other parts. The local government officials have granted the company a lease to treat the assets on condition that the company will remove the asset and return the site to its former condition at the end of the asset life. The company has recognized a liability of 250000 in respect of the expected clearance cost. What are they talking about here? Dismantling cost. Dismantling cost. Are you okay? So we are going to add, isn't it? We add the 250,000. We assume that this is the present value. So we add it to the value of the asset. So we have this, this monthly, this monthly cost. Cost. This monthly cost of 250 words. Thousand. Okay. So what will be the total cost of the assets? Let me just use my sound formula. Okay. So the initial cost of the asset will be this will be the initial cost of the assets. Then you can now do your depreciation and everything thereafter. 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 I hope you all know how to calculate depreciation of reducing balance better than the uh, straight line method, isn't it? So, I'm not here to talk about that. That is how we determine cost of an asset. That is how we determine cost of an asset. Initial cost of the asset. Okay. Let's look at. Uh, we also look at the subsequent measurement, isn't it? Okay. Let's look at the subsequent measurement. Let's look at another part. Let's look at another. Do you know what we call complex assets? Mm, yes. Complex assets. Okay, someone can someone can classify building as a complex asset. The person will you see the air conditioner. The person will say it's a separate asset on each one with a different useful life, isn't it? Someone okay. can also say the building is a separate item on each one with a separate useful life. Someone can also say the the fixings and furniture. They are also a separate asset with what? A different useful life. So you are going to have one asset, maybe building. Building and the person will say, okay, this this building has a different different component, and they all have different different use to life. So the person will treat it as a complex asset, as a complex asset. So the person will take the building separately and divide it over different useful life. The air conditioner, the lifter, the lift. If they have the lift, they will take it as a different 
a different asset and depreciate it using a different useful life. They can also take the furnitures and few things inside in the room and they will, they will also take it as a separate asset and depreciate it. So asset is a, any asset with a complex component is what we call the complex asset. Example is the plane, is the aeroplane. You see that the seat is, is a different thing with a different useful life. The engine, the body itself, and those things will be treated as a complex asset. So an asset with a different component, which has a different useful life, is what you call a complex asset. Are we okay? My problem today is revaluation model, not anything. The cost model is the same as the depreciation that we calculated. Cost minus accumulated depreciation. That is the revaluation. That is the cost model. Let's look at the subsequent measurements. The subsequent measurement, the entity can decide to either carry the asset at a cost model or a revaluation model. If you say cost model, what is the meaning of cost model? Cost model is that the, uh, the entity is carrying the asset at historical cost. The initial amount that they bought the asset, they are carrying it and they are writing a depreciation against it. So it is cost minus accumulated depreciation minus accumulated impairment, if any. That is the cost model. You just take the cost, you can play depreciation on it. You just take the cost, you can play depreciation on it. That is a cost model. But we have revaluation model. We have what we call revaluation model. The revaluation model, what we do is that at the end of every year, we measure the assets at their fair value, at the market value. So the, we bought the asset 10,000. At the end of the year, what are people paying for? This asset, how much are people paying for this asset in the market? If I want to go and sell this asset now, how much am I going to sell it? How much am I going to sell it? So if you have the value of the asset as 100,000 from the beginning, and you assume that the useful life of the asset is 10 years, 10 years, that is January. You have 100,000 at the beginning of January, and at the end of the year, or you assume that this asset is going to be used for 10 years. At the end of the year, they are now saying that the value of the asset is 125,000 in the market. What, what would be the value of the asset at the end of the year if you are using the 10,000, you are using the 100,000, what would be the value of the asset at the end of the year? It will be 125,000. No. If the asset is 100,000, you are using it for 10 years. Generally to decide what would be the value of the asset. Forget about the fair value. It will be what? 90,000. Okay. But they are now saying that the asset is how much in the market? I think so what is happening? Oh, okay. What is happening? There's an increase in the in the value. By how much? 25,000. 25 or 35? It's 35. Uh, 35, 35. The actual value should have been, the actual value should have been 90,000, but you are not saying that it's 125,000. Is that a, is that a decrease or increase? It's a, it's a decrease in assets. Increase. It's an increase. increase. An increase, increase. In, increase in assets. So we, this increase. Is what we call revaluation was surplus or gain. Revaluation surplus or gain. Revaluation surplus or gain. So what we normally do is, that, okay, the question is, if I should be carrying the asset at its original value, what should I be the cost at the date of the revaluation? What should I be the cost at the date of the revaluation? So 90,000. 90,000. So if I want to sell the asset, it should have been sold at 90,000 without any gain or loss, isn't it? Yes. But now they are saying that it's 125,000. It means that if I should sell it, I'm going to make what? A profit of what? 35,000. 35,000. Okay. So at the end of the year, before you go to the next year, what will be the value of the asset for next year? Is it going to be 90 or 125? 90,000. 125. It will be 125. The 125 yes. is the new value of the assets now. So the old value, which is 90, you forget about it. Should I take that part again? If you are using revaluation model, at the end of every every year, the asset must be measured towards fair value. The fair asset value, must okay. be measured to fair value. 
So if you are measuring to the fair value, the asset, the value of the asset might increase or might what? Decrease. If you want to know whether the value of the asset has increased or decreased, you ask yourself, if I should be using the asset based on the original value, what should have been the value of the asset as at the day that I'm doing the revaluation? So if, if this asset was used for two years, if the asset was used for two years, if the asset was used for two years, what should have been a value at the end of the, uh, the second year? What should have been a value? 80,000. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, now, now we are saying that the value of the asset now is what? 125. What is happening? What the there has been an increase. The asset has increased by what? 45,000. 45,000. So... At the end of the second year, you will forget about the 80,000 because the new value of the asset is 125. So you will not take the 125 and depreciate it over how many years? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Because it's 10 years you have used two years already. So you depreciate it over the remaining what? Eight years. Are you okay then? The 45,000 is again, where will it go? Where are we sending the 45,000? Yeah, capital surplus. Okay. If we have prepared statement of profit or loss or other comprehensive income, where will it go? Yeah, you, you, I think uh, it will go to uh, capital surplus. You add it to Okay. I would say that if you have prepared statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, where are you going to put it? Say equity, the equity side. And the income. Right. Do you have equity side in the in the statement of profit or loss and other currency income? Ah, so I, I just financial position. I'm oh, sorry. And <laughs> so, income. So you you add it to a uh, when you get a gross profit, then you add it to uh, as other <laughs> income. Too. And uh, income. I mean, you, okay. So most of us have gotten uh this exemption for FR, isn't it? Yes. No, profit and loss is for our ordinary activities. Revaluation loss is not something that will happen often. So this will be seen in other comprehensive income, the portion of other comprehensive okay. income. It's, it's, it's not part of our ordinary activity. The ordinary okay. activities has to be in a profit or loss account. Things that we do every day, advertising, selling, and those things will be there. Those are ordinary activities. Okay. The revaluation game is, is, is an extraordinary business activities. It's not something that okay. we, we do as a business. So it will count to the other comprehensive income parts. Are you okay? Oh, All right. okay. All right. Well, what normally happens is that, what normally happens is that, okay, assuming you have revalued the asset for the first time, there was a revaluation gain of what? 45,000, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Let's assume that at the end of the third year, 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 they have now told you that the value of the asset is now 100,000. 100,000. Okay, if you are carrying the asset at 125,000, what should have been the value at the end of the third year? 70,000. How do you get the 70,000? The asset is no longer 100,000, or it's 120. So you would depreciate the 125 for over eight years. That would give us how, 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 how much at the end of every year? How much for every year? Your, your voice is gone. How much every year? How much every year? 15,725. 15,000. 625. So what would be the current value at the end of the third year? What would be the current value of the asset at the end of the third year? 109. 100 and what? 9,375. 109,375. Okay, something like this, isn't it? All right, that should have been the current value. But they are now telling you that the value of the asset is what? 100,000. What is happening? So there's a loss. The loss of what? 
the difference between the hundred thousand and then uh, hundred hundred thousand nine hundred and some. So you, yeah, so okay. that's it. Okay, so so the question is, have you revalued these assets? For the uh, is it this the first time that we are revaluing this asset, or we have revalued it once before this one? We have revalued it before this one. Okay. Yes. So what was the gain that we have gotten? Forty-five thousand. Okay, now we are getting a loss of what? Nine thousand three hundred and seventy-five. It it means that all things being equal, the gain should not have been forty-five thousand, isn't it? Yes. The gain should have been yeah. what? The gain should have been the difference between the nine nine thousand uh three hundred and seventy-five and then fourteen. Is it forty-nine thousand? No, it's nine nine thousand three hundred seventy five. That should have yes, been the nine thousand. Yes. Okay. The difference between the two. Okay, that should have been the actual gain, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. so what? Forty. Okay. So where did we send the forty five thousand first? Under comprehensive income. So the loss. Where are we going to send the loss? We have to send it to other comprehensive income to 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 net. To, the forty-five thousand, isn't it? Yes, yeah. to reduce. Yes, yes. Okay. So yes, if yes. you are doing, if you are doing revaluation for the first time, if you are doing revaluation for the first time, you ask yourself, was there any revaluation? Hey. Okay. Was there any revaluation before you are doing this? Before. Okay. Was there any revaluation before you are doing this? If there was, was it a gain or loss? If it was a gain, you know that it will go to other comprehensive income, isn't it? So yes. if the second revaluation is not giving a loss, you ask yourself, okay, the first gain that I have, can it net off the loss that I have now? The loss. Okay, you can see that 9,375 okay. can, can be taken away from 45,000. We still have that particular figure, some, isn't it? Some. Okay. Yes. Assuming the loss is now 46,000, what will happen? We have only 45,000 in other comprehensive income. So what will happen then is we'll that still we have a loss of 1,000, isn't it? Yes. So what will happen is yes. that we we'll just go and take 45,000 and net it against the other comprehensive income because the loss that we have over there is what? 45,000. If you take all the okay. 46,000 over there, the loss over there is not up to 46,000. So you just net the loss. You take the loss, the, the gain that, the portion of the loss that relates to the gain that you have previously what, realized, which is 45,000. The remaining thousand will be sent to profit or loss account because you can't have loss in other comprehensive income. Just write it against the profit for, for, okay. for, the, for the company. Are you okay? Okay. Okay. So this is how we do the revaluation. If it is first time, the gain should go to other comprehensive income. If it is first time and the loss, where would the loss go? Profit and loss account. To, yeah, to go to profit account. or loss accounts. So if there's a subsequent gain, what will happen? Let me, let me look at this one. Like there, there was a loss of 5,000, which goes to profit or loss account, isn't it? Okay. Profit or loss <clears throat> accounts. And now we are having a subsequent gain of 8,000. What will happen? Are we sending all the 8,000 to other comprehensive income or what, what are we going to do? You uh, would take the loss um, um, account um, amount from it first okay. before sending it to the other comprehensive income. Okay. So what we do is that we take the 5,000 and go and net it against the one that we have written against the profit. Mm. And you bring the remaining balance towards other comprehensive words. Income. 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 So if it's still a loss, you will write it against PL. Are you okay? So you can have a revaluation gain for which will be a loss. Subsequent gain. What you do is that what was the initial loss? What was the initial loss? Assuming the, the gain now is four is four thousand. What, what what will happen? We just take the four thousand to profit or loss account, and we still be having a loss of one thousand there. Are you okay? Thousand. Okay. So you ask yourself, the first revaluation, was it a loss or it was a gain? 
if it is again, how how was it treated? If the subsequent one is a loss or gain, how was how are you going to treat it? That is basically about a revaluation, and that is what I want us to do today. The focus is on revaluation. The the focus is on revaluation. Okay. We also have something that it is the policy of the company sometimes to transfer. Okay. What is the what is the let me use let me use proper. Okay. What was the depreciation for? What is the new depreciation now? The old depreciation should have been 10,000, isn't it? 100,000 for, for 10 years. 100,000 for 10 years. What should have been the, the depreciation based on this? It will be 10,000, isn't it? 10,000, yes. Okay. Now, at the end of the year, they are saying that. Okay. Let me, let me make it at the. Let me make it at the beginning. Okay. Let me make this at the end of the, the beginning of the second year. So this is at the, this is January. Let me make it January 2021. And the revaluation will be January 2022. Okay. So they are now saying that the value of the asset is 125,000. Okay. So January 2021, to January to December 2021, the value of the asset will be what? What will be the current value of the asset? 90,000. Which will yes. which will still be the same as the opening balance for January 2022, isn't it? 2022. Yes. yes. So if you are, if you are revaluing the asset at the beginning of January 2022, what what should be the the gain, what should be the increments? 35,000. It should have been 35,000. 35, yes. Okay. So what would be the new depreciation from this, this year now? What would be the depreciation? That would be nine years. That would be nine years. Yes. Be nine years. So 125 over nine years. One, three. That's 13888. 889. Okay, let me make this one to be so that we can get a correct figure. Let's let's make it one and nine thousand and see. One and nine thousand. If you divide, what are you getting? Can we get a, an exact figure? Let's let's make it one. It should be one two one one one. Let's make it one at eight thousand and see. So the gain will be what? 18,000. Okay, let's make the gain. Okay. So what will be the what will be the depreciation now? 12,000. The gain is 18,000, isn't it? And the depreciation now is what? 12,000. 12, what, what happens to the depreciation? Depreciation has increased. Has increased by how much? Two thousand. As a result of what? Revaluation. Okay. Revaluation. Where where do we send the revaluation surplus to? Other comprehensive income. Other comprehensive income, isn't it? Okay. Under normal circumstances, under normal circumstances, this twelve thousand, ten thousand should have been sent to what? PNL. 10,000 should have sent to PNL and 2,000 will go to where? 2,000 go to where? 2,000 will go to where? Other comprehensive income because the 2,000 relate to the revaluation what? Surplus. And the revaluation surplus doesn't go to PNL accounts. Mm. Okay. Uh, revaluation surplus doesn't go to PNL account. So under normal circumstances, okay. 10,000 should have gone to PNL accounts. 2,000 should have gone to net what? The revaluation surplus because we have used one year out of the 18,000 because the 18,000 is for nine years. Are you okay? Yes, yes. But what we normally do is that we send all the 12,000 to what? Profit or loss account. So if you are sending all the 12,000 to profit or loss account, it means that you are going to reduce your profit in the profit and loss account by 2000 because the actual depreciation should have been 
10,000 if there is no revaluation. And the revaluation does not affect profit or loss accounts. So we should have sent 10,000 there. But we sent, what, 12,000. It means that the profit for the year will reduce by, what, 2,000. 2,000. So what, what the company normally does is that they want to reduce that effect. So they will make an annual transfer for a revaluation surplus to retain earnings. So the question will say, it is the policy of the company to make an annual transfer from the revaluation surplus to the retain earnings. The annual transfer will be made on the excess depreciation. The excess depreciation over here is what? 2,000. 2,000. Or another way of doing it is that the 18,000 will be realized for how many years? 18,000 will be for how many years? The 18,000 now will be for how many years? What is the remaining useful life of the assets? Nine years. Nine years. Nine years. So nine the 18,000 is also for nine years. So if you divide 18,000 by nine, what are you getting? Two thousand. So what, what the company will do is that they will transfer two thousand from the retain from the revaluation surplus. So they will come and subtract two thousand for eighteen thousand to have sixteen thousand, and this will be transferred to retain earnings. That is why I'm saying that under normal circumstance, the ten thousand should have gone to profit and loss, and two thousand will go to what other comprehensive income to reduce this to sixteen thousand. But we don't do that. We still keep the eighteen thousand. And go and subtract twelve thousand for the profit and loss. It means that the portion that relates to the the revaluation surplus was added to the depreciation for the year, which should have gone to profit and loss, and it was subtracted from the profit. So what we do is that for us to net that effect, we have to transfer the excess depreciation added to the actual depreciation from the revaluation surplus and send it to retain earnings. Where do we send profit? It's not retain earnings. So if you are sending yes. the 2,000 to the return earnings, it means that you are trying to bring your profit back to the normal as if you are subtracting the 10,000. So the question will say is that for FR people, the question will say is that it is the policy of the company to transfer the excess depreciation to return earnings. How do we get that? Just take your revaluation surplus divided by the remaining useful life of the assets. Revaluation surplus is 18,000 divided by the remaining useful life of the asset, which is nine years, you are going to get 2,000. So you go and what? Subtract it. That is why, that is the reason behind the annual transfer. That is the, the reason behind the annual transfer. A portion of a portion of depreciation which relates to revaluation surplus has been subtracted from the profit, which should not have been done. It should have, it should have been subtracted from revaluation surplus in the other comprehensive income. But we subtracted it from the profit. So what we do is that, we have to go and take that portion from the revaluation surplus account and send it to the retain earnings to bring back our profit to our normal position. That is the annual transfer. So let me see that we have any other issue, then I will just solve question. Let's see whether we have any other questions. So that we... Okay, timing of revaluation. Timing of revaluation. The timing of revaluation is very important. You have to know whether it is at the end of the year or it is at the beginning of the year. If it is at the end of the year, you have to ask yourself if the company should be carrying the asset as its normal value, what should have been the carrying value at the date of the revaluation? Then what is the fair value now? Is it increasing or reducing? Then if it is increasing, you have a revaluation gain. If it is reducing, you have a revaluation surplus. The fair value at the date of revaluation now become the value of the asset going forward. Going forward. That is the the timing of a revaluation. You have to know when the revaluation will be done. If it is at the beginning of the year, it means that you won't do any further depreciation. But if it is at the end of the year, it means that the asset will depreciate for a year before you do the revaluation. So you have to find the current value of the asset as at the day that you are doing the revaluation. You compare that value with the revalued amount and see whether you are making a gain or you are making a loss. That is the timing of the revaluation. Okay. Let's look at, uh, I have spoken about the initial the accounting entries, subsequent revaluation, I have spoken about that. Disposal of assets, disposal of assets. What you have to do is that you look, you look for the current value of the asset at the date of disposal and you compare with the process. If you should have, if you, if you're having 90,000 and you sold the assets for 100,000, it means that you are making a profit of what? That 10,000. If you have to sell the assets, for 100,000, you sold it for 90,000. It means that you are making a loss of what? 
a loss on the sell. So at the date of disposal, what you do is that you just look for the current value of the asset. If I should sell the asset without making any profit or loss, how much should I have sold it? That is the current value. And how much did I sell it? That is the process. Compare. If it, one of them is higher, it will either be a loss it, or it will either be a gain. That is the, the, this, the depreciation and revaluation. Okay. Let's look at review of depreciation methods and useful life. Then we solve at least three questions. Then we look at the, we finish the PP. We finish the PP. The FR people, you still be doing PP and final accounts. It is very crucial. You can't have final accounts without PP. So we still do the PP over there. But for CR people, maybe you can have a question on both PP and in payment. They will combine the question. They will combine the question. Okay, let's look at the review of depreciation methods and useful life. If you are reviewing or if you are saying that, okay, the original useful life of the asset is, is 10 years. The original useful, of the as, useful life of the asset is 10 years. So let's assume that the original useful of the asset, the useful life of the asset was 10 years. 10 years. And the value of the asset was 100,000. You use the asset for two years. You use the asset for two years and you are not saying that the total, value, the total useful of the asset is 12 years. How do we go about this issue? You use the asset for two years. You use the asset for two years and you are now saying that what? The total value, the total useful life of the asset should have been 12 years. What do we do? Do we go back and say the depreciation should have been 10,000 divided by 12? So we start writing them off. Or what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Have you heard about accounting policies before? IS8. Change in accounting policies and estimates. Yes. Okay. The standard says yes, that review of useful life and Depreciation method is an estimate. Therefore, it should be applied well, prospectively. So what will happen is that you have already used the asset for how many years? Two years. Two years. years. So if you have already used the asset for two years, at the date of the review of the useful life, what should have been the value of the assets? 80,000. 80,000. 80, yes. So now you are saying that the total useful life should have been what, 12 years, isn't it? Yes. You have already used what? Used two. So what will be the remaining useful yeah. life? Ten. Ten. So the standard says that mm -hmm. just look for the, the current current value and depreciate the asset over the remaining useful life. So it will not be yes. from the beginning of year three, the asset will not be depreciated at 80,000 divided by what? 10,000. By 10. Don't go and be saying that it's 12, you will not be having 100,000 divided by 12. No. It, has, it, is, no. it is not done like that. You find the current value at the date or in the year that you are reviewing the asset. Then you take the current value now and depreciate it over the remaining useful life of the assets. Are you okay? Yes. Um, that is a review of the, the review of the assets, the depreciation and method and useful life. Let's look at tutorial questions. Let's look at tutorial questions. Do you have any questions before we move on? Let's look at tutorial question one. Tutorial question three. Okay, who is reading for us? There, there was a question in the chat. chat there was a yeah, question so in the chat. Yeah, I asked a question on the chat. You asked a question? Yeah. I can't, I can't see it all. On the chat. So I would, so okay, let me just I say, I was, I was saying that uh, with the- Assuming you go cost. to a community to build a factory, okay. Yes, yes. As you read the question and answer. Please, assuming you go to a that community one, to please. build a factory and the permission is granted on the condition that you build a school or health facility for the community, do we add the cost of the disconstruction to the cost of the factory? Okay. Assuming you go to, let me take it again. Assuming you go to a community to build a factory and the permission is granted, is granted to you on the condition that you build a school or health facility for the community. Do we add the cost of this construction to the cost of the factory? No. 
the cost of building the health facility or the school is not directly, it has nothing to do with the factory. It's not, you can't trace that cost to the factory. Are you okay? So okay. You, you either assume that you are doing a donation for the community where you are going to exchange that. Or you okay. assume that th that is not even for the company, isn't it? The health facility will not be for the company. Will not be for the company. It will be for the community, isn't it? So the company will see that as a donation, which is an expense. But you are giving, that's the condition they give. If they allow you to go ahead and build a factory, you must put up that school or health facility. So maybe if you don't agree, they may not, they may not allow you to, to go ahead and build a factory. Okay, so you are you are saying that it's also a cost necessary to building the factory, isn't it? I'm just, yeah, in, in, okay. in that uh, case. In that, okay, in that case, in that case, it can be yes or no. It can be yes or no. Okay, though, although the cost is, is incurred as a result, we want to be the factory there. Are you okay? But maybe yes. they can ask you, is that the only place that you can build your factory? Okay. Okay. If that is the only place and you need that factory, then you can add the cost of the health facility to the cost of what? The factory. But in, 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 in this case, the cost of the health facility cannot be traced to the cost of the factory. We can't see it on the factory. We can't see it on the factory. But if that is the condition, you can't do anything about it and you don't have any other places that you can go and build a factory, then you can, with this reason, you can justify your inclusion of the, the cost of the health facility to the cost of the factory. Okay. Are you okay? Yes. Uh, but, but okay. Building of the health facility for the community doesn't um, doesn't um, fall under the description of an asset because then the company wouldn't have control over it. No, but this one is is this they want to be the factory, and they are incurring this cost because they want to be the factory, and they can't avoid it. It's it's unavoidable cost because that is the just only like, location that they can be the factory. Sorry, just like uh, the example you gave about long commission asking okay. for. Recovering of the land with the mining people. Yes. You see, that one too, I mean, the recovering is not, you have to do it after everything. So that's the condition if you are to continue with your mining too. So, so that's why we add the value, I mean, the present value of that uh, recovery cost to the cost of the item. So I think this one too, because it's a condition, and if you don't satisfy, you can go ahead and build your factory. Mm -hmm. And you can only add a cost if that is the only place that you can. You see, sometimes companies will, will engage, we call something creative accounting. Companies okay. will go there and say they like they have given a condition and they want to increase the cost of the assets. So they will engage in this things and their cost of their factory will increase. But if maybe the auditors come, they are going to question you on certain things. If it is become critical that you can't without that particular cost, you can construct the factory. And that is the only location for the factory. It means that this cost is unavoidable. It's either you don't build a factory or you build a health facility and continue with the factory. So in this case, you can add the cost of the health facility to the cost of the factory because it's, it, is, it, is, it is a cost that is unavoidable. Okay. Are you okay? Yes. Yeah, so, so can you also consider this cost as a, a co Social responsibility of the, 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 the entity. That is what I'm saying that the, comp the entity can either, they can also do it as a donation. Okay. I said that part they can say as a donation because they are, they are just doing a donation. But that is where the entity put it upon themselves that they want to be the facility willingly, yes. not on any yes. condition. Are you okay? So, so no, as okay. A, I mean, there's a size of the cost matter. In this case, uh, maybe the schools will even cost more than the, the construction of the factory. So that's a cost matter. The cost, you see, that is what I'm saying, that the auditors, it's, it's not the company that is, you see, the, it is the auditors that are going to say this and this. The mm -hmm. company, the accountant can design and put the cost there. Are you getting it? But okay. if, if the cost of the factory that, if the cost of the factory that you are building is higher, it's lower than the cost of the school, it means that I will assume that you intentionally did that to increase the cost of the assets. Okay. But if you have enough reasons to justify why you are 
you, you are adding that cost like that is the only location and you don't have any other place or even if you go to other place that are, that is the condition are you okay and without the factory you can't operate so you can yes. you can reasonably and comfortably add that particular cost to it Thank you, sir. Are you okay? Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so can it also be the same thing as uh, 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 let's say you you you've gone to a particular community to do a project, okay. and then you have to relocate certain yes, houses from the um, years. You understand? So can you add a re relocation cost, company, or you have company. to go and construct new buildings for them elsewhere? Can you add the cost to the cost of the, uh, I mean, the, 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 the factory? Okay, come, come and give me the question. I, I had relocation, but I didn't hear everything. Yes, most of the time, government can decide to take. Like the National uh, Cathedral, sorry, National Cathedral. <laughs> they pull down okay. buildings and they have to build new buildings for them. For judges. Cost. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. Or, the, the, or, or when they are construction rules, then okay. they. they Destroy uh, place the building by the roadside, and then you have to go and rebuild somewhere for them. Okay, okay, okay. So you are asking whether that cost, that cost can be added to the cost of the construction or something. Construction, yes. yes. Okay. What will happen is that, okay, you incur that cost because of the construction, isn't it? Definitely. Yes. yes. But after the construction, would the building, would the building be 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 scattered? Are they going to are they, are they going to scatter them? That is the first question. If they're not going to scatter, then it's just like the, the, the government is building those buildings for the state, not because of the construction. Because after the construction, it will be used for different things. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. But if it's after the construction, the building will become useless or they will, they will, they will, they will, they will dismantle them or they are going to do something, then it means that those buildings were there because of the construction. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there were original buildings there, which were for the construction, which were yes. for the construction, and you went to dismantle or scatter them or something, mm -hmm. those particular buildings are going to have what carrying value, isn't it? Yes. So if those are added to the cost of the construction, you have to come and take the carrying value of the buildings that are dismantled and replace them with a new building now, with the cost of a new building now. Okay. So it depends on the purpose for the building. It is if it is purely for the construction, where at the end of the construction, people will vacate the places and they will they will they will dismantle it or something. But if at the end of the vacation the government will rent it out to people or the government will convert it to offices, then it is an it is an asset built for the nation, not because of the construction. Hmm. Are you okay? Yes. Okay. So the cost, they don't have any problem with the cost. If you can justify, the, you see the standards, that is not a reason why the, the, the board has issued standards, just to prevent accountants from engaging in certain things that will not benefit the shareholders. Okay, we have a standard that we call non-current asset head for sale and discontinued alteration. Some entities, because they want to boost their profit, they will say they, they decided to sell this asset. And since you have classified the asset that has for sale, it means that you're not going to charge depreciation on it. You are not using it. So there won't be any depreciation on it, isn't it? Yes. So the depreciation related to that particular asset will not be charged. And if depreciation is not charged, our profit will increase. So the next year, they will mm -hmm. say that, okay, they, they don't want to sell the asset again. They will bring it back and they will start like, using okay. it again. You, are you getting it? So they are issuing the standard to prevent these practices. So if you can justify the inclusion of the cost, we don't have any problem with that. Mm. Are you okay? So th okay. those buildings, if they are purposely okay. for the construction, if they are purposely for the construction, and we can, they, their cost can be directly attributable to the to the construction. That is, at the end of the day, the buildings will be dismantled. They are not going to have any building over there. So it means that those buildings were being constructed for what? For the construction. Are you okay? But if at the end of the day, government will convert it to uh, maybe rented apartment to the government, okay, it means that we are just building a national asset and we don't know what we are to use it for. And we give it to people who are constructed that they should stay there for the meantime. If you are okay with the purpose, then we rent it out. Are you okay? Okay. All right. All right. Yes. 
I was having a question on the on the on the professional fee. Okay. Let's say the professional fee is a one time payment. Okay. You add it to the cost. Okay. But in a situation where the professional fee, let's say you bring in a, 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 a a machinery and you need an expert to, to, to manage that uh, uh, machinery for a period of time. And those experts or professionals, you didn't pay them at once, but you decided to pay them every month because mm -hmm. they are going to be in that is there, organization. Is there, is there, one, there a one time IP. payment that you are, you are trying to, you are trying to. I'm talking, the one time payment is different, but okay. this one, the same professionals okay but they they are they are being paid every month okay instead of a one time payment okay they are That's... in charge of the machine just okay. to manage the machine for a period of time then then maybe they go back because sometimes some companies they bring in let's say an equipment they don't yeah. have the expert yet to manage it okay so yes. maybe the manufacturers can bring in an expert to come and manage that machine for a period of let's say uh, yes. uh one year or two years and okay. then those uh, 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 people instead of being paid a one time whatever payment they have been paid every month okay such okay. payment do you add them back to the to the, to the system is the the the, the, the is, it should be it should be it should be a topic that we should be teaching the accountants at the workplaces <laughs> you, can, you can see that you are bringing reality issues the question is yeah. the question is is the asset already in use no or they are coming to do the work so to make the asset to prepare the asset for its use. Yes. That, those yes. are the questions. If they are coming they to prepare the, mm -hmm. the asset is not already in its state that the entity wants to use it, but they are coming to do yes. work so that the asset will be prepared for its intended use, and you are paying them monthly. Yes. That one, that course you can add it as part of the professional course if the asset is not already in use. But if the asset mm -hmm. is ready for use and you are using it by the the employees don't have the the they don't have the expertise or the skills expertise. to run this, and now you are yes. you are having those people to come and come and manage the assets which is already in use. We assume in that use, you have yeah. to apply those people for part time basis, and you are paying their salary. Okay. Are you okay? If the asset okay. is already in use, but you don't have the skills to do it, then it means that those people you are employing them on part time basis, and you are paying them salary. Okay. But if they are coming so, to do work to bring the asset to its intended use, that is the asset is not it's not even in use. But the work that they are going to do will help you to use the asset. Then we can also we can still include it as a professional cost. Those is monthly, but it's just a one-time payment that you are spread over months. Okay. All right. Someone to ask question. No, I just wanted to. So that can we add that to the pre-production test? I mean, cost. Yes, it will be part of the pre-production cost, but it will not be the added wages. to the capital. It will the not be wages. added to. Yes, it will be wages and salary as a normal expense in the profit and loss, but it will not be added mm. to the cost of the assets. Mm. Okay, let's. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a serious thing. No, the issue is the issue is if if. We have gotten the people to make the asset ready for use. Are you okay? Yeah, but yes. the asset is ready for use. If you start the asset, you start working correctly. But the employees that we have, they don't have the skills to work. To manage it. To manage the asset. It's also assumed that you are hiring those people to come and train the employees. And you are paying them the hiring fee. Are you getting it? Which has nothing to do with uh, maybe bringing the asset to its use. The asset is already in use. If some of your employees will have their skills, they will be using the asset and you'll be paying them, you be, you be paying them salaries, isn't it? Yes. It is assumed that those people are now your employees and you are paying them the salaries. Now you should have paid your employees that have their skills. Okay. Are you okay? okay. Are you okay? okay? But if they are coming to change something for the asset, like coming to do some work, or maybe you, you, you bought a new engine, you don't know how to fix it in the car. Are you getting it? So mm. you, you went to bring maybe mechanic to come and do some work, change the oil and those kind of things. Those people, they are, they are doing those works to bring the car or to bring the engine to, the, to, a, to a condition where if you put it in the car, it will start working. So the money that you are going to pay to that person, will be seen as a professional 
cost. But if you are you are free the engine and the car is now working well, but all your workers know they know how to operate automatic, they don't know how to operate manual. So you are going to get someone who will come and be driving the car for some time, but your employees will be learning from that person. So it means yes. that those two are training them. That is a training cost. That is a training cost. So it cannot be added to the to initial cost of the assets. Okay. Are you okay? Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. My next my next issue is the comments. Uh, 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 I think I like the way you see you're speaking. Uh, you speak like honorable fifty quinty, and uh, I like the way. Hey, don't uh, don't. I, I, I hate that. Part. I hate I hate that guy. Don't. You see, that guy was the MP for my constituency. <laughs> Was really? MP for constituency. I've, I've never seen for the eight years I haven't seen him once in the constituency. You come for only you speak like him. You speak like him. You speak well. No, it's, it's, like a him. it's a coincidence. It's a coincidence. It's a coincidence. That, that, that I guy, like I don't like that speaking. guy. I don't like that guy at all. Really? I don't like him at all. <laughs> oh, okay. You see, I okay. want people. My man is a, a blank one. I don't know whether you know a blank one. Yeah, I know I'm black. Yes, I know people man. who want to, who want to, like who want to give. People want to give, yeah, give what people people need, what belongs to the people. Yes, not that you'll be yes, taking your yes, salary yes. and still be getting the small, small money. Do you know that I went to this is politics? Do you know that I went to North Tonu before I realized that there are funds that are located to uh, people with disability? Yes, yes, yes. In my constituency, I don't know because the money will count, the people will use it <laughs> at assembly. Yes, it's yes. there. I don't know. I went to. Not done before I realized that no, there is a fan like that. <laughs> I don't want let's, let's let's move on with this one. Some people are living already. I don't want yeah. a situation where politics yeah, will come yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wanted this. I mean, love more. Just excite ourselves. So. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Oh, we can yeah, yeah. All right. So I hope the <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, the the PP is is okay now. If you pick a question, it's okay. All right. Let's look at this particular question three and any other question that we both have. All right. Okay. On January 1, 2015, an entity acquired a machine under the following terms. Under the following terms. Manufacturer's base price with a 20% trade discount on base price. So the base price is what? 2 million and 100,000, isn't it? Flight charges is what? 60,000. Electrical installation cost is what? 56,000. Staff training in use of machine is what? 80,000. Pre-production testing is 44,000. Purchase of a three-year maintenance contract is 120,000. Estimated residual value is what? 40,000. Hours. Estimated life in machine hours is 60,000. Hours used for the year is 12,000. Required compute 1,200. Required mm -hmm. compute the initial cost to be recognized in respect of the machine and show the amount to be included in the income statement for the year 2015 and the statement of financial position as such 31 December 2015. So the first thing that is that we have to calculate the initial cost, isn't it? Let's look at okay. the initial cost first. We use a different sheet and look at the initial cost. So let's look at the initial cost of the assets. Initial cost. Okay, the initial cost. The first thing is what? The purchase price. Isn't it? Yes. The purchase price is what? How much is the purchase price? That is two million one hundred thousand. Read the question well. The two million one hundred thousand. There's trade a trade discount. discount there. Okay, we twenty. So that trade, it means that the trade discount was not subtracted yet. This is a this is a purchase. This is the purchase price, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So let's take the purchase price, which is two million. One hundred thousand. So can I can I keep three zeros at the top? Okay. Okay. Two thousand one hundred. One hundred. Okay. So what will okay. happen? We we'll less that. The trade discount. The trade discount is 20% okay. of the purchase price. Yes. So that will give us 0 0.2 times what? 2,100. Okay. What do we have? What do we have? 
Why to be the value there? Um, all 20. All 20. So, it will be what? 420. 420. Okay. We are surprised, isn't it? Yes, please. Okay. What is the next cost? 1680. Okay. Let's just add all of them at once. Because if we are adding, we subtract it. So that is the end. Okay. Okay. The next one is installation what? Cost. What is the installation, installation. cost? Fifty-six. Okay. Installation is fifty-six. Fifty-six. I think I think we've jumped one of the free charges. Okay. Okay. Will you also be part of the course? Yes. Okay. Yes. That means that means you are you are doing you are shipping like you are sending the team by plane. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. If you need. Maybe I saw this person doing this. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. So the that will give us the charges is how much? Sixty. Sixty. Okay. Okay, sixty, okay. It's sixty. Okay, what's next? Pre-production. Installation cost. Pre production because they added testing, it means that testing. If they just say pre-production cost, it will not be passed because since it's testing, that is why. Are you okay? Okay, that will give us 44. Pre-production is 44. Testing, let's just make it testing. It's what, 44, isn't it? Yes, okay. please. What's next? Purchase of three-year contract. Purchase of three-year maintenance contract. Will it be fast? Yes. Will it be fast? No. Purchase of three-year maintenance contract. No, it will not be fast. It will not be fast. Maintenance has nothing to do. With you you will start. Maintenance is after you started using the asset. Yeah. So for the initial course, we are just looking at a situation where. Those calls that you get to even start using the assets. That is the initial call that we're talking about. So any calls that you are going to get after using the assets will not be part of the course because it means that you have the asset and you start using it already. You have determined the call self already. Are you okay? But the purchase of a three-year contract will just be will just be a cost that we are going to. So every three years we pay what? 120. It means that every year, how much are we paying? 40. So we just amortize the purchase, the contracts, the, the maintenance contracts one over the useful life of the contracts, which is four years. So at, at the end of every year, we take we take forty thousand to the statement of profit or loss accounts. So let's find the our initial value. Let's find the initial value. The initial value will now be one eight four zero. Okay, one eight four zero. Okay, so our initial cost is one eight four zero. Are we okay? Okay. So what will happen? What are they saying right now? You can see that they are using they are using hours hours base to to depreciate the asset, isn't it? Estimated yes. life in machine hours is what? What is the estimated machine hours? What is the total machine hours for over the useful life of the asset? Six thousand. What what is the hour use for this year? Thousand two hundred. So if you want to know the depreciation relating to this, how do we do it? Is the by thousand two. The English the English is worrying me. So just just mention it as a figure. Let me see. Two thousand divided by one two five. No, no. The cost divided by six thousand, then multiply by thousand two hundred. Okay. Another way of doing is that it is thousand two divided by total hours times what? Yeah. The cost. Because the cost relates yeah, to all the six thousand. The cost relates to all the six thousand. 
So if 6,000 is 1840, how much would be 1,002? That is also determined as the hours used. The depreciation is the hours used. Depreciation is the hours used. Depreciation is equal to the hours used over the total hours times the cost. Hours used divided by total hours. Or multiply by what? The cost. The cost. So another way of doing it is that this eighteen forty is for what six thousand. So if eighteen forty is for six thousand, how much would be for thousand two? Okay. So our depreciation will be how much? Our depreciation will be will be equal to thousand two hundred over six thousand. Six thousand. How much multiply by what? Eighteen forty. 1840. Where, since you are doing the calculation, add all the zeros. 184, 8000. 1000. Okay. So, what's the what figure there? Yeah. All right. There yeah. is 68,000. Residual value in the question. There. There is a residual value. Sorry, sorry. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. The residual value is what? 40,000. 40, so if the total value of the asset is 1840, and they are saying that at the end of the year, we are going to sell it for 40,000 or 40 cities, we are giving three zeros. So, so how much of the assets value will be used? A difference. Okay, so we have 1840, we are selling it at what? 40, it means that the 18, it means that the 18, it's only one million eight hundred thousand that will be used, isn't it? Okay, so it means that this we subtract the residual value from this, which is forty. Okay. But what was the value of the shares in the old company? It was hundred thousand. It was hundred thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Now we are giving the how much? Eighteen thousand. What are we having? We are having a gain of what? Twenty thousand, isn't it? The person is still playing my video. Hey, as I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are we okay with the residual value? I didn't see that. Yes. So the depreciable amount um, will be the cost minus the residual value, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so what will be the depreciation now? Thousand two hundred times eighteen thousand. What will be the depreciation figure? Three sixty thousand. Three sixty. Thousand. That is the annual depreciation. Okay. The question says that we should show this. So we have calculated the, the initial value now. So the amount to be included in the income statement for the year. Income statement is a profit or loss account. Are you getting it? So let's count here. Let's count to the income statement extracts. Income statement extracts. So we have the balance, we have the currency sign here, which is this one. So the first item, the first expense that will come here is what? Depreciation, isn't it? Okay. Let's make it to be depreciation. Depreciation is 360. These are all expenses. So we put it in brackets, 360. Okay. The next item. There are some of the items in the question that we didn't capitalize, isn't it? The first one is what? Staff training course. It should be it should be expensed. So the next one is staff staff training course. Staff training course should be expensed. How much is that? Eighty thousand. That is eighty thousand. So we have eighty. This will also be in bracket 80. The next one is what? What will be the next one? Look at the question and tell me. Maintenance cost. Okay. Maintenance. Maintenance. Okay. Maintenance cost. Maintenance cost. How much are we sending there? 
40,000. So, he, no, 40, it's, three, it's three years. So, every year will be what? It will be 40,000. 40, okay. 40,000. It's, it's three years for 120. So, every year will be, every year will be what? 40,000. 40, okay. 40,000. So, so, what will be our total expenses now? Four eighty. Four. Four eighty. Okay, four eighty. That is our total expense for for this for the income statement for twenty fifteen. Let's count to statement of financial position. Statement of financial financial position extracts. Financial position extracts. So let's put a currency sign here. What are you going to have? You are going to have. So what will be the next, the next, the first asset that will come here is the machine itself, isn't it? Yes. So the machine, yes. the machine will be, what is the initial cost? 1840, isn't it? Yes. 1840, that was the initial cost. Yes. yes. And it's a depreciation of what? 360. So what, what will be the remaining balance? 1480. 1480. Eight, okay. The next one is the maintenance contract. Additional two years will be remaining, isn't it? Yes. Maintenance contract. So the maintenance contract, do you know what we are going to do? Okay. No. One will, one will be consumed in the immediate year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you can split it as non-current and current liability. But if you put all the 80 over here, so nobody's going to say anything. Are you okay? Okay. So me, I can make it, I can put non-current assets here, non-current assets. Then I'll put 80 here. I'll put 40 here. Then I'll count to current assets. Then I'll put the remaining 40 there. With a, with, okay. with a mindset that the the next maintenance cost will be consumed in the immediate year, which is the following year. But you can still put all the 80 here. Nobody is going to say anything. Okay. All right. So basically, this is what they're asking us to do. Basically, this is what they're asking us to do. For, for Kofri reporting, if you want to get questions on PPE, maybe it can be theory or they'll combine the PPE with other assets where you have to calculate depreciation or they can combine with in payments where you have to find the current value you compare with the recoverable amount and see whether the, the asset has impaired or something. But I don't think you can get a full question on PPE for, for, for people reporting their doubts. The doubts. But they can put it in a question where you have to calculate depreciation or something before you get. They can be in payment or on current asset head from so where you put something, you have to calculate the position and something. But for FR, FR there, you can get a question on a, a standard question on, on IA system. On IA system. Okay, it's almost 10. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, it's almost 10. Please, can you throw some more lights on the maintenance cost? Okay, the Especially maintenance cost. The the maintenance cost, you see, maintenance is, you do maintenance after you started using the asset, isn't it? Yes, sir. So we only capitalize costs that we get, we in care to bring the asset to a state that we want it to be before we start using. But if, if in any case you incur a cost, that is after you started using the asset, if that cost is going to improve upon the efficiency of the asset or is going to extend the useful life of the asset, then you have to add it back to the cost of the asset. But if you, if you have a car that, that will last for 10 years, even if you do maintenance, will this going to change the, the useful life of the car? No. No. But sometimes instead of you doing the maintenance at the end of every year, you just go into a contract with, 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 with the mechanic that, okay, you'll be bringing the car for servicing at the end of every five years. So you pay the person maybe fifty thousand. That you are, this money is for what? It's for five years. It means that at the end of every year, you are paying the person ten thousand. Mm -hmm. 
So instead of you going to the mechanic to do the maintenance at the end of every year for 10,000, you say that, okay, let me do it for every three years for one or 20,000. That you should have been going to the mechanic to do the maintenance and he'll be charging you at the end of every year 40,000, at the end of every year 40,000. But you are giving the person what? One or 20,000 that, okay, that is maintenance fee for three years. It means that at the end of every year, you'll be doing a maintenance at a cost of what, 40,000. Maintenance will do nothing to the asset. It will not do anything yeah. to the asset. The asset is still have the useful life. Are you okay? Yeah. So you okay. just, yes, you just. Uh, up to that point, I get it. But okay. the recognition in the statement of. <clears throat> okay. The maintenance cost is for three years and you have used one year now. It means that remaining was. Two years. Two years, which it is your money with the person. If the business has money with someone, that is an asset to the business. Exactly. It means that the person is still owing you a maintenance fee of two years. So you have to recognize it. After you went to do the maintenance, then you write it off. I get that. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you can see okay. that the question four, the question four, okay. You can see that the links own a factory at a cost of 100,000 assets. January 1, 2017, the factory is depreciated at a rate of 12.5%. As of June 30th, the entity completed an extension of the factory at a cost of what? So if you do an extension to a factory, what will happen? It's going to increase the capacity that the factory will take, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Therefore, yes. this extension cost should be added to the cost of the assets, but not the initial mm. cost, the value of the asset as at the day that the extension is done. Then you add this course. This question should we should solve it. We should solve this question. So maybe the next one, maybe we solve additional two questions before we look at income tax. The next standard will be income tax. I have the note on all the standards. So the one the ones that we will not require, I will still send them to you and you read them. Okay. All right. It's almost 10. And too much of everything is very bad. Okay. So yes, but uh Mm. Right, right. Yes, I have a question, and I know this question they wouldn't ask in an examination, but I just want to know what's the difference between the financial reporting and then corporate reporting. See, the, the difference is that the financial reporting they assume that you need to nest maybe some basic things. But mm. for corporate reporting, it's at it's an advanced level, which is financial reporting, maybe be you can be you can do it for maybe small companies. You can be a financial okay. accountant for small companies. But if you go okay. to corporate reporting, there are some issues that will happen okay. that will not happen in small firms, like this reorganization. Okay. Reorganization is one of those sensitive, for corporate reporting, we deal with only sensitive what, issues. Issues okay. that, are, that are affecting companies, that are making companies to go out. But financial reporting, they just take it to be there, maybe. The, the small level which, which you do with issues where uh, you have, uh, maybe if, if you have a group account, some companies, some small companies, they can just acquire the company uh, at once and that is the end of everything. But in reality, mm -hmm. a company can be buying the shares of a company 10%, 10%, 10%, 10% to a person will get 60%. Okay. So for corporate reporting, we look at those advanced issues advanced issues but for financial reporting they just look at maybe the basic issues okay so oh. basic issues that is the corporate reporting that is the financial all right. reporting all right okay so uh, i will just end my recording